Hallelujah. Anybody in the house have a testimony? The only way you get a testimony is God has have to had delivered you through a test. Many times we get frustrated and we don't like tests, but having a test is the only way to get a testimony. And it doesn't matter whether you like tests or not, you will get them. Anybody know I'm right about it? Hallelujah. But if you can trust God and have faith in God and be faithful to him and obedient to him in the midst of the test, the good news, you can tell them like the three Hebrews did, that God will deliver me. God can deliver me. Anybody know I'm right about it? God can deliver you through the test. And once he delivers you, what it does is it produces for you a testimony. And you can tell everybody it's not something you heard about, not something you read about, but something you personally experienced. God has been good to you, and you are truly blessed. If you're blessed, give God some praise. If you're blessed, then you know it. If you're blessed, then you know it. Clap your hands. Amen. What an awesome, awesome God that we serve. All right. God put on my heart uh, to share with you for the rest of the summer, the remaining of the summer until the fall. Uh, we'll go through a series, a summer series, a little mini series, and we're going to call it Summer Seed Sowers. Amen. Summer Seed Sowers. That is our series. Uh, for the remainder of the summer. Summer seed sowers. Amen. Let's look at the gospel according to Mark, and uh, we'll read chapter 4, verses 26. We'll start at 26 through 32. And when you find it, please stand for the reading of God's holy word. Amen. Mark, chapter 4 starting at verse 26, and we'll read through to verse 32. All right. When you find it, say amen. If you're still looking, say wait one minute. All right. And this is a parable. Uh, this is Jesus sharing with us. And you ready? And this says in verse 26, he also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. It's amazing how simple the definitions of things are. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, and then the full kernel of the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like, talking about the kingdom, it is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all the garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord series for the summer, Summer Seed Sowers, and for our sermon today, under that series, we're going to talk about Kingdom Sowers, Kingdom Sowers, series, Summer Seed Sowers. Summer time is for resting. Uh, if you like that, somebody say amen, amen, amen. Summer time is for resting. Most families plan their vacations and all of that during the summertime. We think about beaches and all of that and blue waters and relaxing when the summertime comes. And even though you may not be able to rest the entire summer, God put on my heart as your pastor that loves you to tell you to make sure that you get some rest during the summer. Can I get an amen? Everybody turn to your neighbor, tell them, take a break. Tell them, take a break. Tell them it's summertime, it's summertime, take a break, get some rest, amen. 
And I had to learn how to do that. I've been pastoring, and I thank God for the key church and a mature church with mature leaders. And I can go and take a break and be confident everything is going to run smooth. Amen. There was a time I passed it. I was scared. Amen. I was scared to go on vacation because it might not be a church when I get back. Amen. And had some members like to fight a little bit. Amen. God is good. I had to stay in referee every Sunday. Amen. So I'm um, thank thank God. But summertime is for I told y'all too much. Summertime is for resting. Uh, why is that? Because when God, our Lord, creator of this universe, was creating the universe, He took a day off and rested. Some of y'all, I know y'all progressive, and I know y'all motivated and hardworking. Y'all think y'all stronger than the Lord. If you don't sit down, you will fall down. Anybody know I'm right about it? And so somebody turn to neighbor again, tell them, go sit down somewhere for a little while, because we don't want you to fall down. Amen. We are not designed. If God, the creator, the Lord of the universe, got all power, all of that, if he took a day off, then what makes you think that you can work without taking some time off? And summertime is the time to take some time off. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise if you receive that. Amen. I had to learn it. I had to learn it. And some people are challenged with my pushback. I have to push back a little bit, and I have to put some no's in my game. Matter of fact, I get in the mirror. I work on mine. Amen, y'all. Y'all want to go with me? Y'all want to practice? Come on. It'll help you. Practice with me. Just come on. Form list. No. No. Can't make it. Won't be there. Because people don't mean any harm. <laughs> uh, but the people that love you most, if you just did everything they wanted you to do, would probably run you in the ground. Nobody can take care of you like you, and nobody will take care of you like you. And watch this. Uh, come on, y'all give God a hand clap of praise. I it's interesting. I was preparing this sermon, and... I have an organization that I love very, very much, and I have had the privilege, a huge nonprofit organization, uh, probably has a budget of about four or five million dollars a year, helps thousands and thousands of people, and they gave me the honor of being on their board. And so, but somebody called me last night and said, Pastor Holiday, we ain't seen you, we haven't seen you since the pandemic. Are you still on the board or not? And I said, or not. That's all good. But I, but I love them, and I really want to do it, but God has just given me such a responsibility. And uh, matter of fact, I, I left, I stopped going a little bit before the pandemic because we started building the building. It was just so overwhelming. I wasn't able to make it. And, but now, and then our church is growing so much, and I just have to set my priorities. You cannot be everything to everybody. It is just impossible. And you have to learn to put some no in your game. You need to learn how to, to shut down. You need to learn how to rest. Um, I'm working with it through First Lady. Y'all pray for me. I just need one day off and with the church. One day, just one day. One, one day, but don't nobody call me. Can I, can I get an amen? Hallelujah. One day, one day. If somebody else can help, them, help you, let them help you. Amen. Because watch this. Because if I pass out, we all in trouble. If you pass out, your entire family, your family, if they're not careful, they will push you to pass out. But if they pass out, if you do pass out, they all in trouble because they a whole lot of people are depending on you. Anybody know I'm right about it? You really need not just a day to rest, you need a day to spend some time with the Lord, to recharge. Like how can a battery always give out and it's never, come on somebody, and never receiving anything in. That's your car, your battery runs everything in your car. Let that battery go out in your car. I don't care how nice it is, be dead as a door now. And even though the battery gives out so much to so many different parts in your car, it still needs an alternator in its life. It needs somebody. Come on, somebody or something that is pouring into them to recharge it so it can be a blessing to everything else. Hallelujah. And what, what me saying, all of that, take a break. The Lord took a break. Take a break during the summer. But, but don't take the whole summer off. Let's keep serving the Lord. And watch this, this is what God put on my heart. And let's, let's make the rest of the summer 
a commitment that we will sow God's seeds even though it's the summer. Let's not, let's not completely take off from sowing God's seeds. So that's what we're going to be. We're going to be summer seed sowers. So we're going to sow the seed of God even in our community, even though it's summertime. Take a little break, but don't take the whole break off. Amen. We need, still need to work for the kingdom of God. God put on my heart to make you a promise. If you will be faithful to sow his seeds during the remainder of the summer, God saying, as a church, the key church, we will see a great harvest of souls in the fall. Amen. Hallelujah. If you will be faithful, if you will be faithful to sow God's kingdom seed during the summer, God says that he guaranteed that he'll bless you. And what the reward is that we as a church will see a great harvest in the fall. Like this is an amazing summer crowd. And, um, but y'all don't even want to know what's great happening in September. It's great break loose. But let's make sure that we do our part to be a blessing and to serve God and to be a blessing to people. All right, let's look at verse 30. Let's look at verse 30 and then we'll go ahead and break the passage down. And it says in verse 30, again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like or what parable shall we use to describe it? The first thing I want to talk to you about on today, I want to talk about kingdom residence. Amen. Kingdom residence. Jesus was talking to them about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. And if you are a believer, you are a resident of the kingdom of God. Anybody here a believer? Anybody here a believer? Hallelujah. Uh, they said, uh, anybody here, uh, y'all member of the church? Anybody, any members of the church or the key church? Amen. All right. Oh, that's good. That's all good. And it's good to be a believer. It's good to be a member of the church, but God wanted you to know you're not just a member of the key church. You're not just a believer, not just a member of his family. You are a member and a resident of the kingdom of God. And you need to understand that because it's very, very significant. The key church is just a local body, but the kingdom of God is all of God's children together. Amen. Hallelujah. And so you need to understand something about being a kingdom resident. All right. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to go for the ride? Let's go. Let's go. Uh, buck your seatbelt up. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? All right. Uh, it's going to get rough right off the beginning. All right. So in the kingdom of God, since I'm going to talk to you about being a resident of the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, there are two personalities in the kingdom of God. Y'all ready? And pastor, how can we discover who we are in that kingdom and, and, and how can we discover what those two personalities are? I love the word of God. It is so simple. And both residents of the kingdom of God is explained in the title kingdom. Y'all ready? In the word kingdom are both representations of both personalities, both types of personalities in the kingdom of God. You got two types. You ready? One is the king and the rest are the dumb. Somebody say hallelujah. And turn to your neighbor and tell them, and you're not the king. Tell them you're not the king. <laughs> Woo, can I get an amen? All right. I ain't want to be offensive. I ain't want to be offensive. I said, Pat, that pastor ain't just called us dumb, did he? That pastor ain't called us dumb. Not D-U-M-B, D-O-M. Um, but nevertheless, since we're not the king, what that means is that he has all knowledge and wisdom, and we have almost none. And uh, Pastor, how can you say that to us? And, and look, and it's strange to be able to just say that to y'all, whereas the Key Church, we have one of the most intelligent, smartest congregations in the world. We really do. We just got some high-level education. We got some smart people here at the Key. But I'm uh, sad to tell you that in the two personalities, he's the king and we're the dumb. And unfortunately, as people, uh, we're just not that bright. All through the Bible refers to us as sheep. And sheep, the dumbest animals that the Lord ever created. Amen. Y'all just like that. Y'all looking offended. Amen. Uh, you, 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 you seen people train all kind of animals all around the world. You ain't never seen nobody train a sheep. Amen. See it. Roll over. You ain't never seen nothing. Uh, ain't, ain't, no, ain't nobody circus. Can I get an amen? You ain't see sheep jumping through nothing? No. Come on, somebody. Somebody said, 
<laughs> Won't he do it? <laughs> All I'm really simply saying is that as the DOM, the DOM part of the kingdom, that we are incapable, we don't have the capacity to navigate through this world successfully. We can't do it. Left on your own, all you will do is mess up your life, destroy your life, and destroy the lives of those around you. Amen. Uh, guide them in the wrong way, influence them the wrong way. After the devil destroys you and leads you the wrong way, he'll use you to um, negatively impact those around you, mess up your family, mess up your kids, mess up your friends. Um, that's just how it is because we just don't have the ability and the capacity to live a successful life on our own. Now, as being residents of the kingdom, there are some benefits that help us, even though we're not the most intelligent member of the kingdom. The king is the most intelligent. He has all the wisdom, all the knowledge. Come on, somebody. Anybody know I'm right about it? All the power, all the resources, all the money, everything we need, he has. And so even though we're incapable, we serve a God and we have intimate relationship continually anytime we want with a God that has everything we need. So there's some benefits. There's a benefit package. Anybody have a good job and it may not pay as well as you want, but the thing you like most about it is it has good benefits. Yeah, two people. Your job don't have no good benefits? Yeah. All right. Can I get an amen? But, and that's what we looked about. Ladies looking for brothers with benefits. Right. Hey, Y'all not ready for me on the day. It's the summertime. Come on. I want y'all to pick it up. Can I get an amen? I like that brother. He got a uniform on. That means he got benefits. <laughs> Post office, UPS. Come on, man. That brother got benefits. Uh, anybody know I'm right about it? So there's some benefit, and, and no matter how good your job is and how good the benefits are, the benefits that you have at your job cannot compare to kingdom benefits. There are, there are eternal benefits that come along with being residents of the kingdom. There, there are health benefits. You think you got the health benefit? Uh, the health benefit at your job might be able to fix something, but it can't heal something. Can I get an amen? But the, the benefit of being a resident of the kingdom is that the king of the kingdom can heal whatever problem you have. Benefit of the kingdom, it can mend marriages, it can repair relationships, it can save lost people, it can change community. There is some benefits that come along with being residents of the kingdom of God. Anybody excited about the benefits, give God a hand clap for it. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the benefit package of being saved. Amen. Now, let me give you the greatest benefit, since he's the king and we're the dumb. The greatest benefit is that through prayer, we have access to him at all times. And the king sits high. Even though we live low, the king sits high. It's because we live low, you can't see that, well, when you're low, can I get an amen? Because all you can see is low things, and everything's coming at you, and it's moving fast, and you don't know what to do. You don't know how to navigate. But the good thing is you have somebody that sits high that has a better view. Anybody been up in an airplane, and you get a much better view? When you get up high, you can see farther. You can see better, you can see clearer. The higher you go, the better you can see it. But he sits high and he sees better. And the good thing is that the one sits high can navigate us how to navigate effectively while we're down low. And we have always have continual communication with him to be able to communicate with him to say, Lord, which way I need to go? He say, bust a left. Thank you, Jesus. Because I was great to get stuck in traffic. Anybody, watch this. Y'all live up here and y'all learn some back ways. Anybody learn some back ways? Because if you would have stayed on 35 or 287, can I get that one? Or 820, you'd have been stuck for 30 minutes. But thank God for the back way. Anybody know I'm right about it? And I'm so glad that God knows how to navigate you to keep you out of traffic, to keep you out of trouble, to keep you out of danger, to keep you out of accident, to show you how to be successful, to show you how to be a good husband, to show you how to be a good wife, to show you how to raise your kids, to show you how to do everything. He said, lean not to your own understanding, but in what? In all things, how many things is all things? Everything, everything acknowledge him. Everything talk to him about. There's nothing too insignificant for him. There's nothing too great for him. In all things, acknowledge him, and he will. He didn't say he might. He will do what? Anybody here too old and too tired to take any more bad paths? Anybody tired of taking bad paths? Anybody been down a couple bad paths already and don't have time for all that? Oh, time out for the bad paths. Your boy too old and too tired to take bad paths. 
And while you're trying to figure it out, stop trying to figure it out and just talk to God and let him work it out. Because God can show you. He can keep you from wasting a whole lot of time, effort, trouble, drama. Oh, anybody tired of drama? Ooh. We was on our way to church, and first lady said, honey, how you doing? I said, I'm so blessed. This is just so awesome. I got a drama-free life. Isn't it peaceful when you got drama-free life? It, but that's because I learned a long time ago to talk to God and let him navigate. Because the greatest benefit I have is I have somebody that sits high that they can navigate me. You know, when we was going through this building, you know how murky the waters were for us to try to work through all of the, the realities of us being here? And there was no human possible way we were supposed to be here. But the good news is that the Lord before you, he's more than a the world against you. And not only that, he's smarter than the world that's against you. And he, he sits high. And we, instead of us trying to figure it out, we're working against forces that we can, you know, <clears throat> I got to be careful what I say. Um, you know, it's real when the city don't want you in the city. I ain't, I ain't get that. The city know how to keep you out of their own city. They, they can't do it just right up front, but they know how to play the games and the tricks. But uh, isn't it good to know that you serve a God that's bigger than the city? Woo! And if we'd have been foolish enough to try to figure it out on our own, boy, the city would have whooped us. But I'm so glad if God be for you, he's more than Fort Worth against you. Anybody know, all right, or the neighbors next door wrote petitions they didn't want to send. The city councilman playing games they didn't want to send. The city didn't want to send. Nobody wanted to send. And the folk that didn't want to send is bigger than us, but they're not bigger than the God we serve. And we had sense enough to pray about it. And God, we had to get a couple of matrix moves. He didn't say weapons won't be formed. They, he just said they won't prosper. They were, they were shooting them arrows. Then they come out and we close the building. Fuck, how y'all build that building? During the pandemic, who, who does that? The ones that serve the Lord. Why don't they do it? Somebody, come on, give God praise. And he did it for us corporately, but he'll do it for you personally. And that's, that's one of the greatest benefits of being a kingdom resident is that through the venue of prayer, God can give you instructions of how to navigate because you don't, I don't care how educated you are, you don't have the capacity or the ability to navigate through life on your own. You will mess it up. You'll tear it off the fray. Anybody know I'm right about it? Anybody know I'm right about it through past experience? You've tried it before and found out that doesn't work. Amen. So what we need to do is stop playing and start praying. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. So we talked about the dumb. The dumb part of the kingdom does not just describe our human condition in that we're incapable of being successful on our own. It does not just describe our human condition. It also describes our spiritual position. Because the dumb in the kingdom, the dumb stands for dominion. And so the kingdom is the place or the people that the king has dominion over. For those who have surrendered themselves and the authority of themselves to the king, now you have become members of the kingdom. And all it means to be a member of the kingdom is that you have allowed the king to have dominion and authority over your life. When you surrender your life to Jesus, you surrender your life to Jesus as Lord. And he is the Lord of Lord and the what? And the king of kings. And so, watch this, and that word for Lord in the Greek is kurios, and kurios just simply means boss. And so what it really means to be saved is not you just go to church or pay your tithes, but it means that you fully, understanding the gospel and who Jesus is, you make a commitment to surrender yourself to the authority of Jesus as Lord or boss. Now, there's only one correct way to respond to a boss, and that is yes. And if your response to the Lord is never yes, then you're probably not saved and you're not a member of the kingdom. Can I get an amen? The way you can prove to yourself that you're a member of the kingdom is that your heart is to always tell God yes. Watch this. To always tell him yes even when he's, when he's asking you to do doesn't make sense. 
Because I don't obey him. I don't, I don't surrender to his authority just when it, I can rationalize it and it makes sense. Because his ways are far above our ways as heaven is above our, the earth. And so his ways of doing things will never make sense to me because he's smarter than me. But I, I figured that out a long time ago. So I stopped trying to figure it out and I just talked to him and let him work it out. And whatever he says, I just trust him and I do it because he knows what he's doing. Uh, y all, y all, anybody? Know oh, come on. All right. All right. Let me, let, me, hey, let me give you some practical realities of what I'm talking about. Um, when we were building the building, we had a building committee, and everybody on our building committee are executives. They're major players. This is what they do all day. They negotiate big deals. They make things happen. Can I get an amen? And so we had a deal. We, we purchased this land. First time when we purchased this land, and we purchased the land, like the realities of it was so deep because we purchased the land. It was a blessing just to get the land, but the mortgage on the land by itself was 8000 a month just for the land before we start building. But then we had 11 acres on this side. We had one acre on that side. So first thing happened, the realtor said, what you going to do with that one acre? I said, put it up for sale. Because the Lord had given me wisdom that that one acre was the key to it all. So he said, how much you want? 500000 He's like, 500000 David, you're not going to sell that to Bill Lamb for 500000 Why you want, where you get 500000 from? Because the guy that sold it to me, he got one acre on the worst part of the of the." Uh, the, the park, and he want 500000 for his. We own a good park, 500000 <laughs> And after about two years, he said, ain't nobody biting, man. You want to lower it? Nope. 500000 Ain't nobody biting. I just need one. <laughs> Y'all seen that commercial dude was sitting in the middle with a Snickers, amen? He said, how much your Snickers? 10000 10000 for Snickers? He said, I just need one person to buy one. Can I get an amen? Anybody know I'm right about And finally, that one person came. It was the Patels. And they're the, they the top hotel owners in the world. And they came, Indians from India, and they came and they purchased our land. We, we had it up for 500000 uh, We agreed 450000 uh, for the land. We only paid $1 million for the whole thing. Yeah, 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 is this working out in your mind? Y'all uh, uh, ain't ready? Let me, hold on, hold on. I got to finish preaching. I got to finish preaching, but it just dawned on me how good the Lord is. Let me take a, all right, all right, okay. <laughs> it just dawned on me how good, I, I, I forgot how good he's been, amen. I just, all right, all right, let's get back to it. Okay, so, um, you know, when you could pay a million dollars for 12.5 and just sell one for almost half of what you paid for the whole thing, only the Lord can do that. Y'all ain't, ain't figured that out? Okay, all right. So anyway, um, we agreed 450000 and so uh, the president, uh, K.P. Patel, he came to me. He said, Damon, and you know, they don't, realtors don't like you to talk, so he had to get around the realtor, and he figured out my number, but I'm the pastor, so that was easy. Figured out my number. He called me. He said, man, it's K.P. I'm the one buying your land. Can I take you out to breakfast? I said, yeah, and I'm thinking, here we go. All right, so, and so we get to the breakfast, and he said, man, Damon, I need a $50,000 reduction. $50,000? Like, man, you a man there. We broke. Why would we? Reduce the land 50000 He said, because uh, we built a four-story hotel on one acre, and if you don't know anything about building, the, the, the most challenging thing for the city is that you have to have water. Uh, buildings collect water, and then the water just falls straight down. So that most times, if you see a large building, you'll see a pond. You think it's just decoration, but it's a retention pond because the water has to go somewhere. And so for a four-story hotel, if they didn't have proper retention, the parking lot will always be flooded. And there was nowhere to put a retention pond, so they had to build an underground retention pond. That means that they had to put a tank under the foundation that could capture all the water, that it can slowly release it to the city um, drains. And so, but that's the most expensive way to do it. And so it was going to cost them almost 200000 to do an underground retention. He said, man, I'm going to need a kickback, 50000 I was like, 50000 Ooh, that's a, I can tell you right now, my people are going to say no, but I'll go ask them. And so I got all the building committee together, all these major executives, and we got down and we talked about it. I said, KP won 50000 back. They was like, absolutely not. <laughs> and they gave me a myriad of reasons. Everything they said was right. And I said, okay, everything y'all said, Pastor, he just rich. He trying to take advantage of us. He think we don't know what we're doing. He know you ain't never done this before, Pastor. He just, he think he could play us like that. We're not doing that. No, we're not doing that. And I said, okay. I said, well, all, everything y'all said is right, but let's pray about it. I said, so we're going to pray. Come on, y'all clap right there. Amen. I said, we're going to pray. 
Let's take a week. Well, let's pray about it for a week. Let's convene. We'll come back right back here at the same place, same time next week, and let's figure out what the Lord said. We prayed about it. We got back, and I said, all right, y'all prayed about it. What the Lord tell y'all? They said, okay, we'll tell you what the Lord told us, but first tell us what the Lord told you. I said, the Lord told me to tell him yes. They said, well, if the Lord told you to tell him yes, Pastor, ain't nothing left to talk about. Tell him yes. <laughs> one of the reasons the Lord told me to tell him yes is we only had one fish on the hook anyway. Y'all had to have y'all play. One like the phone was ringing off the hook. We just had one. <laughs> Y'all playing. All right, watch this. And then, watch this. And so this is what the Lord gave me. The Lord was genius. The Lord came to me. I, so I called him again. We met for breakfast again. I said, KP, um, the church is going to give you the $50,000 kickback, but this is what the Lord put on my heart to ask you in return. Will you help us with building supplies? Because between you and your cousins and your uncles, y'all build about 15 to 20 hotels a year. Nobody can get supplies like you can. Will you be willing to help us in return for the $50,000 kickback? He shot his hand out. He said, you got a brother. <laughs> he said, I ain't even think about that. He said, but absolutely. He said, and I won't save you 50000 I'll save you hundreds of thousands. That's what he said. Well, let me just tell you what he said. Then I went back and I told my real estate agent that. He said, boy, you a fool. You can't even get that in contract. They ain't, they, that ain't going to never uh, come to pass. And I was like, whatever. So, it, you know, we made, it, we made the deal. We sold the land. After we got the land, now we ready to build. We, got the, we done sold the land. We got money in the bank. Bank's talking to us now. And now bank agreed to pay. We ready to roll. We done got the architect. We done got the blueprints. We got all that. We ready to roll. Uh, the city, playing games with us, kept us in the permit process for six months. Our contractor went to the city every week for six months, and they kept running us through loops. But they was doing it on purpose because they know subcontractors' bids are three months at best. So it's one of their tricks to destroy your project because once they gave us the permit, all of our subcontractors' contracts were obsolete. So now we back in debt. The foundation guy wanted 100,000 more than he agreed. The plumber wanted 50,000 more. The electrician wanted $50,000 more. The, the sprinkler system wanted 50,000. Everybody wanted, it, it added up to about four, five hundred thousand dollars that the bank said they was not going to loan us. We were in trouble, dead as a doorknob. Bank told me was in trouble. You're not going to make it. So my contractor, he was about to pass out. I'm about to pass out. And finally, um, I was praying, and the Lord said, KP, I forgot about this. This is months later. This is about eight months later. I said, ooh, KP said he'll help us. It's the only thing I can think of. We try to figure out how we're going to keep this church going. I lost his phone number, but his brother is over construction. They had already started the hotel before we started. I said, ooh, I'm going to go try and catch HP. He's over construction. I went up there. Soon, watch this. Soon as I got to the land, my contractor was driving out. He thought about it before I did. He said, they said they'll help us. I said, oh, hallelujah. Look, they met us. He said, uh, and he said, it's good that we caught him today because he was getting ready to go on vacation for three weeks. But if we meet him here tomorrow, he'll hook us up. We met him there. It was a Friday. We met him there Saturday morning. He came with his contractor. He made his contractor give us his price. And then he said, don't let him order the concrete or order the steel. Let him measure it, tell you how much you need. And then here's my contact with the concrete company. And here's my contact with the steel company. They'll give you my price. It got us right back on track. It saved us $100,000 right off the bat for the foundation. Watch this. Watch this. The, the Patels built this building. I guarantee you, they saved us about four, four to 500,000. We would not have a building if we had not made that deal for 50,000 up front, even though it didn't look good. That's why you lean not to your own understanding, but in all ways, acknowledge him. The greatest benefit is you got somebody that sits high that shows you how to navigate as you operating down low. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Won't he do it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I got the roll. I got the roll. All right, God is good. I, 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 that took a long time, but I had to give you a practical reality of what I was talking about. And God will do that for you in your life. God will show you how to get the car on deal. God will show you how to get your house on deal. God will show you he'll put stuff on sale for you. Anybody know I'm right about There is nothing too big to pray for. And there's nothing too insignificant to pray for. Pray about all things and let, watch God bless your life. Anybody know I'm right about Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 
So as, as, as members of the kingdom, we have surrendered ourselves to the authority of the Lord. And under his authority, we need to learn how to tell him yes. No matter what he asks us to do or how he asks us to do it, we just need to learn how to say yes. Whenever you say yes to the Lord, I guarantee you he'll bless you and it'll work out better for you. Whenever you go in your own direction or take your own road, you're just going to make it more difficult than it needed to be. Um, no, I don't know about you, but I don't want to go 40 years on an 11-day journey. And y'all playing with me. I know some churches that built their church, and it only should have took 11 days, and they still working on it. Anybody know I'm right about it? All right. I'm sorry. That was too much? All right. Um, come on, somebody. As kingdom citizens, we got to roll on. We, are, we get benefits from being members of the kingdom. But not only do we get benefits, we have responsibilities as members of the kingdom. And then thirdly, we have rewards that come from being faithful members of the kingdom of God. Uh, if you receive that, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. All right, let's roll on. Let's roll on. I got to roll on. All right, look at verse 26. Look at verse 26. And Jesus said in verse 26 um, through 29, he also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. So if you was trying to figure out the kingdom of God and what it was all about and what your membership is about, watch this. Um, he's going to give you your responsibility. It's to only two people in the kingdom, the king and then the dumb. And he says, so this is what the kingdom of God is like. Um, and this is the responsibility of the dumb, the D-O-M. A man scatters seed on the ground. That's it. I'm looking for something deep. <laughs> As members of God's kingdom, we all have one assignment, and that is to scatter his seed on the ground. That's it. If you're not scattering seed, then you are an unfaithful, unproductive member of the kingdom of God. Because we only got one job. There's some benefits, and there is a responsibility, and there's some blessings that come. There's some rewards that come if we're faithful. But the only response, the number one responsibility we have as members of God's kingdom is as, you, as you're going around living life is to scatter his seed down on the ground. Just sling it everywhere. Just sling it. Just, just be sloppy with it. Just, just, you know, you only have to aim good. Just, just, just throw it out there. <laughs> Can I get an amen? The more you scatter, the more faithful you are. You only have to have good aim. Just throw it at Just hit everybody. Hit people in the eye with it. Just, just walk through the supermarket. Just throw it. Just throw it out there. Can I get an amen? Because it's in the text. Y'all think I'm making it up. Ain't that what it said? Ain't that what Jesus said? All right, all right. Let me, let me, let me read it again. Let me read it again. He also said, the, what is the kingdom of God like? Y'all was trying to figure it out. What is the kingdom of God like? We don't know what it's like. Let me tell you what it's all about. Jesus said, a man scattered seed on the ground. That's what the whole purpose of the kingdom is. As members of the kingdom, your whole job, men and women and children, is to scatter God's seed on the ground. What kind of seed? Kingdom seed on the ground. All right. Now, um, I didn't finish reading it. Let me finish reading it. Then we'll move on. All right. Night and day, this is the result. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. So you're not even going to know how it's working. You ain't even going to know that it's working. It ain't even your job to worry about that. Oh, you, all he said is you just sow it and go to sleep. While you're sleeping, come on, somebody. And it would have said. He said, but if you spread it, it will, it will sprout, it grows, even though he does not know, all by itself. The seed doesn't need your help. All you got to do, all you got to do is just spread it. But all by itself, the seed produces grain. Uh, how did that look? First the stalk, and then the head, and then the full kernel of the head. And then as, as soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, and because the harvest has come. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, so now you know. All right. So that's our responsibility, which is to sow seeds as we pass them through the earth. Now, what you need to understand, as kingdom residents, we reside on earth, but we don't live on earth. We, we live in the kingdom. We, we're kingdom. Uh, your residence and your address is a kingdom address. You live 324 North Kingdom Street. Apartment B. Can I get an amen? Anybody know I'm right about it? So you live in the kingdom, but 
on assignment God has sent you from the kingdom to operate on earth what we call that word we call it's a sojourner you don't you're not a resident there but you passing through there we just passing through earth on assignment from the king and as members of the king our responsibility as kingdom citizens and kingdom members only job is to spread seed on the ground on the earth while we're here that's it this Carry bags of it with you. Just carry a big bag on you. Just as you're going around, hey, how you doing? Just, just be slinging, just slinging anyway. It don't matter. He ain't say, he ain't, he ain't give no details of how to sling it or how to sow it or how to scatter it. He says, and scatter, scatter implies it's not straight. <laughs> he didn't say aim it. He said scatter it. Scatter me. Just throw it. <laughs> just throw it anywhere. And that in the text, come on, this, this, it can't get it any as simple, or simple as this. Amen. Now, some of you, all right, let me get, let's, let's get down to it. What is kingdom seed? What is the kingdom seed that you're supposed to be scattering while you're here on earth, sojourning, uh, passing through? What is the kingdom seed? The kingdom seed is the gospel about Jesus Christ. That's your one assignment, kingdom resident, while you're on earth, to scatter the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's it. Now, some of you are not yet comfortable with sharing the gospel with strangers and unbelievers. You're not there. Now, what God put on my heart to tell you is you get good at whatever you practice. If you really want to do it like whatever else you want to do, you'll figure out how to do it. And then we can give you some training, but it's really not that deep. Just tell somebody. And the best way to share the gospel is just to tell somebody your testimony. Tell somebody about what you were like before you got the gospel, how the gospel radically changed your life, and now how your life has been since you've been obedient to the gospel. That's really how simple it is. Just give your testimony of how God has changed your life and tell them if they put faith in Jesus Christ, God can do the same for them. Now, if you're not yet there, you're not yet comfortable with sharing the gospel with a stranger, in the meantime, somebody say it with me, in the meantime. In the meantime, get a key church flyer on your way out and scatter that. Really, because watch this, watch this. That's your, that's your in the meantime way of scattering the seed. Because if you get them here, we're going to tell them about the gospel. So if you're not yet there, but don't, but don't just rely on the flyer. Keep growing and maturing. and get to the place where you feel comfortable to tell people. Because people's lives are a hot mess. It's a wreck. They on their way to hell. Their lives are messed up. Their kids are crazy. They, 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 their marriages is a mess. Come on, somebody. Their finances is towed up. Their health is bad. All because they disobedient to the king. And, and God has sent us as kingdom residents. Our number one assignment is to scatter the seed because God has given us the responsibility to try to get as many people in the kingdom as we can before we leave here and go back to the kingdom and go to heaven. Amen. While we're here on earth, we got to scatter seed because God wants to use us to get as many people in the kingdom with us as we can before we leave this earth. And I don't know about you, but I'm trying to get them all. I'm scattered. I'll be scattering seed. Listen, I'm a pastor with, we almost probably, probably on roll, we probably got close to a thousand members on roll, and I still scatter seed. Anybody know me? If you see me at the restaurant, I got a stack of flies in my pocket at all times. Anybody know I'm right about it? Why? Because I never know when God may give me opportunity to scatter seed. My whole job assignment as a kingdom citizen is to scatter seed. If God gave me the, the responsibility of scattering seed, why would I not always be prepared if he gives me the opportunity? It, look, two things that make you successful in life is opportunity and being prepared. Some of you, you always cry because nobody ever gave you an opportunity. But if they did, you're not ready. All you're going to do is embarrass yourself when you get the mic. Nobody, won't nobody let me sing a solo. Well, are you ready? <laughs> opportunity just means, come on, somebody. A lot of people get the opportunity, boy. You're going you to bust a note when you get it or what? You know, can I get an amen? I said, folks, they say, you know, God called me to be an R&B singer. Well, sing something. I'm, you know, I'm not ready. What, what are you talking about? You're not ready. You know, I, I could be a record producer or something. You, can anybody know I'm right about it? So if God called me to scatter seed, why would I not always have some seed in my pocket just in case he opened up opportunity and I meet somebody, look like they need some seed, bam! Y'all saw in living color, bam! And then fighting with the kids and all that, bam! And then arguing with their husband, bam! 
I got something in it. Come on, I go to the, the check cash and she looked depressed. Bam! You look sad? Bam! You underachieving in life? I got something. Come on, somebody. I got, I got something to change. I got something that'll radically change your life. Anybody know I'm right about it? Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. That's our number one job. We're trying to get as many people to heaven as we can before we leave here and we go back to the kingdom. We go back to heaven. Amen. Now, this is the good news that was in the text that we just read, the verses we just read. Your responsibility, oh, I got to preach this and hurry up. All right. Your responsibility is to scatter the seed, but it is not your responsibility for them to receive the seed and fall in love with the seed. That's not your job. Your job is to scatter it. Whether they receive what you scatter is none of your business. That's between you and the Lord. So turn to your neighbor and tell them, pressure off. Tell them, pressure off. Pressure off. Because a lot of times we're scared to scatter the, scatter the seed because we, we take it personal if they don't want the seed that we have. That ain't my, that's not my job. That's not what God called me to do. He said, just scatter. It ain't nowhere in the text. He said something about make sure they get it and pick them up and drive them to Bible study and all that. No, he ain't say that. He said, just scatter the seed. Now, let me give you, let me take another pressure off of you. In the verses that we just read, he said, if you will be faithful to take the responsibility to scatter the seed, in the text, it says there's a guarantee the seed works when you scatter it. Oh, I got to read that to you again. You don't even really believe me like that. Look at it, verse 26. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. Everybody want to know, what is the kingdom of life? This is what the kingdom is like. A man and a woman and a child, members of the kingdom, what they do? They scatter seed on the ground. That's what they do, right? And then night and day, whether they sleep or get up, the seed sprouts. It didn't say it might sprout. It said the seed, the seed what? The seed sprouts, and it what? It grows, even though they may not know. You may not ever be aware of how you bless somebody's life just by scattering the seed. You have no, you, some, it, you, you won't even know till you get to heaven how many people's lives have been changed just because you was willing to share the gospel with them. Just to spread this, and you, you may never understand it. But while you're sleeping, it's growing, and it's rooting, and it's taking, and it's changing, because the seed works. It's not your responsibility to make sure it works. It's, it's God's responsibility to make sure his seeds work. Your responsibility is just to share, just to throw it everywhere, just to scatter that thing. And some of you, God has blessed you so much, and you won't even scatter with what God has blessed you with. God has blessed your socks off. Sometimes God brought people to you and situations to you and opportunities to you, and you won't even tell the people that God brought to you about the God that brought, brought them to you. Woo. If it's tight, it's right. I'm sorry. Amen. Anybody know I'm right about it? Hallelujah. He said it's not your responsibility. Uh, verse 26. Come on, we got to get out of here. And night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. Watch this. The seed doesn't need its help. All by itself, is, uh, it, uh, all by itself, the soil produces grain, and the seed falls into the soil, and it works, and it produces grain, and first the stalk, and then the head, and then the full kernel, and then, and then the head of the kernel. The, the seed is going to do its thing. You, it, you take the pressure off. It's not your job to worry about if it works, but what you can be guaranteed, if you spread it, it will work. It is impossible for you to scatter seed and not be effective for the kingdom of God, because what God is saying, the, the, the power is not in the sower, but the power is in the seed that he's sowing. All you got to do is sow it, and the seed always works. The seed changes up. There is nobody that the seed can't change. There's nobody that the seed can't save. There's no life that the seed can't transform. There's no marriage that the seed can't resurrect. There's no person. Come on, anybody know I'm right about it? Anybody? Now look, take the pressure off. It's not your responsibility for a person to receive the seed. It's just your responsibility to make sure you give it to them. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Woo, isn't it good? All right, so Stop procrastinating and start scattering. Every member of the key should keep a stack of flies in your car. 
We buy enough for everybody to have. You should, everybody should have 10 or 15. And I know y'all faithful, but I run into y'all in the restaurant, and I'll be asking y'all if y'all have a fly. Y'all don't be having none. I'm just telling you. So we just need to be more faithful. Like, if that's your only job, and God, and you know you're going to a place where God may provide you the opportunity to be faithful to what he called you to do, why wouldn't you be prepared to take advantage of the opportunity? And you're not even doing a lot. We're going to get to that. We got the role. It, it's, the work he called you to do is easy work. It ain't deep. They eat and say, hey, how y'all doing? I'm, 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 I'm Sister Johnson and all that. I just want to tell you about my church. It's amazing. Come visit sometime. It'll change your life, girl. It'll change your life. Keep on going. And then they may call you, Bob, and stop asking you, well, what time is it? Okay. Then you can come back and have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, 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 what denomination? Uh, nine. We nine denomination. We just, uh, just you know, they, they'll, they'll stop. They may ask you. But if they don't, just, just pass it. If you're scared, just run. Get a nice little trot going. And when you get by their car, just run. Scatter it in a cart. Come on, somebody. <laughs> y'all playing with me up in here. Amen. I'm going to see y'all somewhere. I'm going to ask you if you got your fly. Amen. Because we should always have them. Church provide them for you. God is going to provide you opportunity. When you go to the mall, and you go to the grocery store, you go to the teacher parent meeting, you go. Um, Ivory, Ivory, she's over security. And she went through a season where she was so sick. She was so sick. And uh, we went to visit her in the hospital. She was so sick. And she couldn't even hardly sit up. She couldn't lay down. with no right place. She couldn't talk. And she was whispering. She said, Pastor. I said, what? I said, what, Ivory? I thought she, I thought she was going to ask me something deep. Because she don't even really need to be talking. It was hurt. It hurt. It hurt to talk. And uh, I said, what, Ivory? She was whispering, I need some flyers. <laughs> I said, what? What are you talking about, Ivory? I, said, I need some church flyers. The doctor doesn't have a church. The nurse doesn't have a church. Bring me some flyers. Yeah, this lady's sick. Can't even sit up. Can't even lay down. But she was like, somebody go, life go get changed while I'm up in here today. I'm, I'm stuck in the hospital, but I'm getting, bring me some flies, Pastor. Can I get an amen? Doctor need Jesus. The nurse need Jesus. I am a kingdom citizen. I scatter seed. Bring me some skis so I can scatter while I'm going through. I'm not feeling real good, but in the meantime, bring me some seed because everybody in here is going to learn about the key while I'm up in here. Anybody know I'm right about it? Come on, somebody. That's how, that's how we got to do it. Have them in your car. Always take them with you in the store, restaurant. God may give you opportunity to scatter some seed. All right, we out of here. Let's get out. Let's get out. Let's get out. All right, look at verse 31, 32. We're great. Get out. Y'all ready? Verse 31. This is going to be good. It's going to be good. Y'all ready? All right, verse 31 and 32. And it says, it is like, so he was, uh, let's go to 30 again. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? So he told us our responsibility is to scatter seed. But what is it like? Or well, what parable shall I use to describe it? This is Jesus describing the kingdom. It is like a mustard seed. So the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet, when planted, it grows. It didn't say it might grow. When planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, which with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. So we talked about kingdom residence, kingdom responsibility. Let's talk about kingdom rewards. The amazing thing about uh, sowing or scattering kingdom seeds is that scattering kingdom seeds is very light and easy work. It's light because it's a light seed. It's easy to do. You can scatter a whole lot. It's effortless work. It's very, it's as little work as possible. And what God is saying is that the re taking the responsibility of being obedient to scatter kingdom seeds is easy. It's easy to be obedient. It's easy to be a faithful kingdom citizen. It's, it's giving you the, 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 the easiest, non-laborious work task that you can be guarantee your success. But he says, even though it's effortless to scatter it and the, the, in, the, the, the scattering of it is easy or the, the scattering of it is small effort, small effort to scatter it, but big results when you do. Oh, y'all ain't get that. He said, it's a small seed. Smallest of all the seeds. Easy, easy effort. Easy to scatter. Small effort. Small seeds, small effort to scatter. 
But if you take the small effort to scatter, then your small effort will always result in major impact. You, you, if you just sow a small seed, when the small seed lands, and the Bible says it always lands on some good soil, somebody gonna get it, somebody's gonna change somebody's life, and whenever you plant it, it always grows. Watch this, and you planted a small seed, small effort, but when it got finished, it was the largest plant in the garden. So out of all the things that's going on in our world that have opportunity to be a blessing to people, nothing can bless the people like the seed of God. It's a small effort for you to plant it, but the results of it are more impactful and a greater blessing than anything else. And look, 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 look. The, the, the seed of God has greater impact on you than Biden's stimulus check. That little thousand dollars ain't helped much. Can I get amen? You was glad to get it, but you spent that thing the first week. Anybody know I'm right about it? But the, but the seed of God, when it grows up into a plant, come on, somebody, it can change their life. It can heal. It can heal. It can provide job opportunities. It'll make people want to go back to school. The people fall back in love with their spouse. Can I get an amen? It'll show you how to raise your kid. Look, you did the small effort of sowing it, but the impact of what it can make in people's lives is enormous. Anybody know I'm right about it? It said, watch this, and then this, this should be able to relate to y'all. It said, it gets so big, and it's branches so big, leaves so broad, that it provides shade for some other folk in the summertime. Now, y'all know y'all should get happy in Texas about some shade in the summertime. Somebody right there, y'all playing with me. Everybody need to stand up right there and give God praise for some shade in the summertime. It's been... It's been hot. I don't want to tell you. Really, I want to tell you because it's going to sound like I'm saying something bad. It's been real hot in Texas. Can I get an amen? It's been hot as you know what. Not the kingdom. Amen. It's been hot as another place in Texas. And what? And God said you could do something that could provide shade for some folk in the middle of summertime in July in Texas. Anybody know I'm right about it? God can use you to bless somebody's life, the entirety of their life. All you got to do is make a small effort. You have no idea. When you take the small effort of handing somebody a church flyer, the enormous impact God can use to make in their life just with the little small effort that you made. All right, watch this. Let's do it this way. Is there anybody that God, that God used somebody to make the small effort of handing you a flyer, and the flyer that they handed you has made a major impact in your life, in your family's life? Since you've been at the key, your life been off the chain. Can I get an amen? God then blessed your socks off. But it's because somebody loved you enough to sow some seed in your life. Now that seed and grew up and became a full tree, a full tree in your life. You eating, you blessed, you got shade. It's, 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 come on, somebody, it's blessing your whole family. It ain't even just, they handed you a flyer. Now all your kids in the church, your family in the church, your grandkids in the church, everybody at VBS, they singing in the choir, they serving. Come on, somebody, just because somebody passed you a flyer, it has transformed your entire family and the entire life of your family. Come on, somebody. And God saying, now he did that for you. Won't you do that for somebody else? Because God's seed is amazing. And the rewards is, it's a little effort. It's nothing else in life that you can give as little effort to and get as many results. You agree when we give God a hand, clap of prayer? It'll bless people's finances. It'll bless their health, bless their marriages, bless their relationships. It'll just sow the small seed of the gospel. It can change families. But it can change, uh, look, sowing a seed can change entire communities. Sowing seeds can change our entire world. And it's not your responsibility to make sure they get it. Oh, God said, all he asking you to do is just scatter the seed. Anybody know I'm right about it? Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch this, watch this. And then look, and not only is the reward that God, you get the blessing of being a part of what God is doing in other people's lives. But there's some joy that comes from that. The joy of God is always equivalent to the longevity of what you're involved in. If you're involved in temporary things, that's why you only have temporary joy. You're involved in little things, that's why you only have a little bit of joy. It lasts a little, a little while. 
But if you start getting involved in God's eternal things and God and big things, God will give you eternal joy and large joy. And the joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Republicans didn't give it to me. Democrats didn't give it to me. Being a part of this sorority or fraternity didn't give it to me. I don't care what I'm involved in. Nothing can give me the joy like the Lord. The joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. Anybody know him right about it? Let's give God a hand clap of praise. What an awesome God that we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On your way out, on your way out, uh, the greeters will have flyers for you. Get you some flies, put them in your car. Everywhere you go, you ain't even have to say nothing to people. Just invite them because the reality is that God has blessed you and allowed you to be a part of a church that's a life-changing experience. And you want that for people. You want them to be blessed the way that God has blessed you. And it'll be easy for you uh, to do that just by scattering the seed. Let's pray. Merciful Father, Lord, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for being such a good God. And thank you, Lord, for convicting us that we're not just church members, but we're kingdom citizens. And you've given us some responsibility to scatter your seed. Help us to be faithful. It's simple, but what great impact it has when we just will do what you called us to do. And so for every person under the sound of my voice, Lord, give them the courage, give them the determination, uh, give them the desire in response to your goodness to them to be faithful kingdom citizens, to do the simple one thing that you called them to do, Scatter your seed on the ground. While we're here on earth, while we're here on our mission, uh, we're on a mission, we're sojourners, just passing through. Before you call us home, help us to get as many people as we possibly can into the kingdom with us uh, so that we can be effective for you. And we know there's some reward if we're obedient to what you do, what you called us to do. You'll bless every aspect of our lives. And Lord, we give you praise for it. Whatever you hear about in the eye closed, if there's somebody here today, you're not sure you're saved, uh, the seed was scattered on your ground, on the ground of your heart today. Is there anybody here that says, Pastor, I'm not really sure I'm saved, but I want to get it right. I want to surrender my life to Jesus as Lord. I, I want him to have complete authority over my life. I want to become a kingdom citizen today. If that's you, just put your hand in the air. Put your hand in the air. Pastor, I'm really not sure I'm saved, but I want to get it right. Really not sure I'm saved, but I want to get it right. Anybody, anybody. Please do not leave this place unsaved. And we're not going to ask you to say anything. We just want to introduce you to Jesus. Anybody? All right. God is good. Give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you so much. You already know you're saved, but you don't have a church home that's going to do so for your growth. We'd like to open up the doors of the Key Church and invite you to join. Is there anybody would like to join the Key Church family? The doors of the church are open. Come on, come on, we need you. Anybody, you've been visiting. Come on, come on. All right, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah, come on, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on down, come on down. Anybody, anybody. Don't let them join by themselves. You've been visiting, and it's been good to you. Hallelujah. We, we thank you, thank you for joining the team, being a part of family. Anybody else, you want to get it right. Come on, come on, come on. We need you, you need us. Anybody else, anybody else. Doors of the Key Church are open. Anybody want to join? Everybody want to join? Come on, yeah, talk to, your, talk to your, your, your neighbor. You came with it. Come on. You know we need to join. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, come on. It's your season. It's your day. Amen. Anybody else? All right, all right. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. We love y'all. Y'all look great. And y'all been coming. Man, I'm so glad that y'all listened to the Lord. We're so glad to have you as a part of our family. So I'd like to welcome you to the Key Church with all rights and privileges and responsibilities. Go see Sister D.I. She get all your information. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Every Sunday, somebody joining here at the Key Church. Look, this is the promise that the Lord made. If we'll be faithful to sow his seed during the rest of the summer, then we will receive an amazing harvest in the fall, I guarantee you. So let's everybody, let's do that. Um, you know, we're in a unique place. We're in one of the fastest growing places in the United States. So people move here during the summer. Even though our crowds look a little light during the summer, even though this is a great crowd, um, our crowds look a little light during the summer, we're high vacation. But people transition during the summer. One spouse get a job, they move, they get stuff set up, find a place, and then after the kids get out of school, during the summer is when they move. So this is when they're moving in, and they're moving in looking for us. All we need to do is be prepared to have opportunity to sow the seed whenever God gives us opportunity. So let's make sure that we do that. All right, y'all, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 
We thank God for lives that have come to join our church. Um, remember, tomorrow, if you have not had the pastor's basic marriage class, it's called Can You Stand the Rain? You'll get a text or go on to our app, and uh, you'll be able to get the the Zoom information. It'll start at 7 o'clock via Zoom. Can you stand the rain? Premarital, or if you are married and you've never had pastor's class, I guarantee you, you want to have it, and I'll see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Uh, Vacation Bible School starts on Wednesday. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. We're excited about that. God is good all of the time. All right. If you want to be a blessing, oh, the veterans. The veterans are meeting. The veterans are meeting today after service, and so you can meet them in the foyer. They'll be on this side of the church. Amen. If you're a veteran, they just want to meet you and tell you about their ministry. It'll be light food. All right. Um, if you want to be a blessing to the Key Church, there's a few ways you can do it. You can download an app called Givelify, and then you can look for the Key Church, and you will see my picture, and you can put your debit or credit card information into that secure account. If you don't feel comfortable with giving online, you can always mail your offering into the Key Church P.O. Box 50793, Fort Worth, Texas 76105. If you're worshiping with us in person, and thank you for your faithfulness during the summer, there are giving boxes at each corner of our sanctuary. There are envelopes there. You can leave the Lord's blessing on the way out. All right, come on and give us a benediction. Come on, El. Amen, amen. Come on, come on. Let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And uh, give God a hand clap of praise for Elder McGee blessing us last week with a great message, man. God bless you. Come on, stand with me, stand with me. As we go before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Grace eternal, God. Sorry. Um, get a flyer. Put it on your social media. If everybody will send a flyer to all your Facebook friends and your social media friends, whatever platform you're on, we need to start using. This is the thing of the day. We're still passing out flyers, the physical flyer, but social media has given us a great venue. If anybody, if everybody will share the flyer with all of your friends on Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, whatever you use, Instagram, share it. Amen. All right. Thank you. He's got to see. Amen. 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 Come on, bow with me as we go before the Lord in prayer. Grace and eternal God, our Father, how we thank you right now, Lord. First of all, God, we thank you for our salvation. We thank you for saving us. And Lord, we thank you for calling us to this servanthood, that you have called us to not only uh, be saved, Lord, but to reach out to others and share our testimonies of how you blessed us and saved us. And now you're using us to reach out and, and to, Lord, to to invite others to get to know you as Lord and Savior. So, Father, I pray that everyone will just take the seed of this word that has been sown today uh, by Pastor, uh, Lord, that we will take it and we will put it into practice and we will obey it. And, Lord, we just look to you for the return. So thank you, God, for bringing us here to the key. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of this journey that you're taking us on. We ask, God, that we will use this opportunity that you've given us to be a blessing to others. So, Lord, let us take this word to heart and, Lord, put it into practice that we, too, can share it with other people, that they, too, can enjoy the fruits of what you're blessing us with. So bless everyone on the sound of my voice right now, Lord, as we leave this place. God, we pray that everyone will have a great rest of the day, Lord, that they will continue to be blessed, and they will just take the seed of this word and take it with them today and then to plant it in the lives of others. Bless our coming and bless our going. We, we praise you coming in and we praise you going out. So we give you all thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You are dismissed. For you, those of you that have children in the nursery, 